what I would say is, in the case of porn addiction, you need to make a specific step forward with your spouse. Welcome to Coffee with a Couple Cure, where we share practical tips for your relationship before you finish your first cup. Here's Jay and Lori Pyatt. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with a Couple Cure. My name is Jay. And I'm Lori. And today we're covering step nine, which is a difficult step, but we know you can do it. Yes. So step nine says we may direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. So the direct amends to such people, those such people are from step eight. Yeah. <laughs> so you made your list in step eight. And in step nine, you're making amends to people. Um, you're making direct amends whenever possible, which means you go to them face to face and you apologize for your behavior. Um, some people, for whatever reason, you never come across them or you have lost contact with them. So then it's a place of waiting for God to bring them back into your life. Um, but you're always willing, if they do show up, to make amends with the exception of the second half of the sentence. Um, which is, which except is, when to do so would injure them or others. Right. And so in this, um, be careful. You know, uh, on the one hand, um, Lori's going to say something about this, but on the one hand, you um, don't want to jump right in and, and, and just go to somebody and I'm sorry for this and this and this. You know, you need to set the tone for the meeting, um, that kind of thing. Uh, you also need to understand that some of these people could be deeply hurt by your actions. Mm -hmm. Their response may not be, oh, thank you so much for apologizing for something that you should have never done in the first place. They may or may not be thrilled to see you. Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind that while this uh, may be good for you, for them, it may be painful. Also be careful of going to them and dumping on them and then walking away like you're so free and you feel so much better because like what we see in the couples we help, I hear it a lot. He dumped a bunch of stuff on me and then he was all happy. And now here I'm the one having to carry it all. So Right. Yeah, now that's that is typically specific to disclosure. That that when um a porn addict, a sex addict comes clean, that disclosure does dump a, a ton of stuff on the spouse. And that takes a, a high degree of sensitivity. And that's why we we talk about therapeutic disclosure that you have people involved to care for the spouse. Right. They're basically watching her to see if she's getting overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it beforehand when he's making his list um, where hopefully somebody on his end is saying, okay, is that the rest of the story, you know, and then maybe bringing up other elements to be able to be as honest as possible. But then during the disclosure itself, they're watching to see if, she's being overloaded, if she needs a break, if she doesn't even want to hear any of it. You know, again, they go at their speed in the trauma model. Right. But something I want to make clear is the Christian step that's in the Bible that relates to this is if you know that your brother has something against you, you know, stop serving me and go and make it right with them. Mm -hmm. You know, leave your... your um, Gift at the altar. Your gift at the altar and go and make it right with them. And then after everything's good between you all, then come back and offer you your gift. Right. And disclosure is much different than amends. Disclosure is more of a step four than a step nine. But in step nine, 
there is a place of saying, wow, I feel so much more free for apologizing to you for, you know, something awful I did to you. And that person is kind of like, I didn't even know you had done that to me. Mm -hmm. So you do have to consider your audience and be careful about how you go about doing this. Um, again, this should be a humbling experience. It is meant to, um, you know, bring you to a place of peace, but it's not just simply, hey, I'm sorry for all the crap that I did and, and bye. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, it's not meant to be flippant. It is meant to be a sincere apology, whether or not that person accepts it is irrelevant, but how you go about doing it is, is very important. Right. And we're talking about making amends, not confessing. So this isn't just, hey, let me dump everything that I've, you know, I need to confess on you. It's, and how do I make it right? Right. How do I make it right? And be careful of going in there saying this should make it right. Yeah. Me saying sorry should be enough because the person you harm might go, no, that's a surface apology. I need I need to see that you're truly sorry about this and something more than just a little apology. It will actually do the work of making amends. Right. But one thing I wanted to ask you, would this be more of a disclosure if the person he confessed to in step four was not his spouse? Right. So in step four, step five, if in step five, I go tell all of my step four stuff oh, to right. somebody who's not my, my spouse. Um, what I would say is in the case of porn addiction, you need to make a specific step four with your spouse um, in regard to disclosure. She may not need to know about how you resent your parents. That's, that's not important. But what you did that impacted her as you acted out in porn, um, she does, I believe she needs to know about. Um, before this step. Before this step, because it is about um, getting all the stuff on the table. And if, if you're going there trying to apologize and put everything on the table, I don't know how that really would work. What would you say would be... It needs to come out. Mm -hmm. It needs to come out. If it doesn't happen in step four or five, I guess it's step five, then um, it needs to happen sometime. It would be great if you were well-versed in how to make amends when you're doing your step five, because it's going to be difficult for her to hear all the stuff that, that you need to get off your chest and all the stuff you need to come clean about and then go, wait a second, I need a few more months to get to the place of actually making this right. And that's, you know, one of the things that Jay really helps guys with. So if you want to make it to where all this entire process can be wrapped up kind of together, then reach out to Jay. Right. And they can reach you at? You can reach me at Jay at the Couple Cure which is my email address there, um, and we can have that conversation. One thing that Lori kind of touched on and I think is very critical is when you're making amends to someone, one of the most sincere forms of apology is character change. Mm. That you may not be able to say directly to that person, I'm so sorry for this and this and this because they've heard it all before. You know, you, you, you may say that to them and it falls on deaf ears, but if you have character change to back it up, then they will see it and, and you will live out the apology that they need. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is, is critical, but it, it, I kind of agree with Lori. You don't want to delay the apology until, you know, I've got everything fixed, but you, you also, um, you know, can through character change, continue to show that that apology is really meaningful. Right. And another way you can make amends and attack the character change piece of it is to have a plan. You know, one of the things that we tell our guys, if they've hesitated to come clean with her is, don't 
just tell her what you've done. Also, um, make amends, ask her what you can do to make it right, but also say, this is what I need to do. This is my plan for, for getting better. This is my plan for not hurting you in the future, but also what, what are your suggestions? What do you think I need to do? Because again, once we get betrayal involved, there's a whole thing of trauma and she might need you to do some things in order to feel safe. Within the context of 12 step, that's not part of the step, but what we're trying to give you is more of our take on it and how we think you can apply this effectively in your relationship. The second half of this statement says, except where to do so would injure them or others. This is another one of those places to be careful. The you can cause a person harm by saying, hey, I did this to you that you're completely unaware you of. You never knew it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it's going to cause them trauma. It's going to cause them, you know, so on the one hand, don't shy away from confessing your sins, especially disclosing to your wife. Yeah. You know, but... There are some other people in your life that may or may not need to know what happened. You can say to them, hey, look, when, when this part of my life was going on, I did some things that were pretty bad, and I'm sorry for how those might have impacted you without getting into the detail. Right. And you can say, do you need me to go into more detail? Right. Another way, I think, to maybe get around this piece of it is... Um, you could go to them and go, look, I feel like I had a negative impact and I might have a little bit more information than you do. What was my impact on you? And then maybe they already know it. You know, maybe they might say, you know what, I appreciate it, but I just cannot do this right now. You can even ask them, is this a good time to even address this? I know you've been through some stuff in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, So there are ways of not wimping out, but also going at their speed. So Lori touched on, you know, don't wimp out. Um, In the, in AA lingo, they, they call that step nining someone, which is, oh, well, you know, if I told them it would cause them harm and therefore we don't, we don't make the amends. So it's, it's just like not putting them on the list in step eight. We have the opportunity to, we know we should, and we don't simply because it would be uncomfortable. When it comes to that, um, again, on the betrayal side of it, if you're wanting to heal the relationship, um, dang it, what were you just saying? Those, it would Step make nine. me uncomfortable. Right. The thing to be careful of is uh, it would only hurt her if I told her. You know, I don't, the reason I don't tell her is because I don't want her to know, or I, well, that's actually what's happening, but the reason I don't tell her is because I don't want to hurt her. If you were really concerned about not hurting her, you wouldn't do the stuff, you wouldn't continue in the stuff, and you you would know hiding it, and if you don't know this, then please take this with, with all seriousness, but then you don't understand that lying is typically to, I'd say 99% of the ladies I've talked to is worse than whatever the initial acting out involved. Right. So don't use this as an out. And this may be where you need someone else to hold you accountable. Um, Because right now it doesn't seem so scary, but once you get in front of that person, it might it might be too scary to to go through with the apology. Not that you can't kind of warm them up to to the idea, but um, avoiding it altogether is is just as unhealthy as as not approaching them at all. Do you have any examples? You know, because it says make direct amends, except when to do so would injure them or others. Do you have an example of when that might happen? Sure. So this. Uh, came up in a meeting, somebody shared an example like this. They were involved in a crime. Mm. 
they were involved in that crime with another person. So two people were perpetrating the crime. And for him to confess puts the other person out in the open. Mm. And so until he goes and talks to that person and says, hey, look, I've got to confess to this thing Mm. and it's going to potentially put you at risk. I need you to know that I'm doing that. Uh, That's kind of an extreme example, Um, but it is one that you need to at least be aware of the possibility. You can hurt a third person by making amends to someone who's on your list. It's very much a case-by-case basis. It's really important to work through your list with someone else Mm -hmm. because in just like Lori was saying earlier, in my addict mind, I thought well, I just don't want to hurt Lori. The reality is I just didn't want to expose myself. So there is a place to make amends that um, it may be painful for her to hear, but she needs to hear it. Yeah. You know. And it ultimately, I know that's not what the steps are about, but it ultimately can heal breaches and broken trust and, and broken relationships. So right. I think it's worth a shot. Right. Again, going back to character change, the character change of stepping in and saying, yeah, it's on me. I'm the bad guy in this situation. I need to take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry for what I did. It was wrong. And I want to make it right. Yeah. How do I make this up to you? Yeah, I want to make it right. Um, Go listen to my six hours of an apology, which is in season two, where making it right is... um, the one of those six r's Mm -hmm. and it might even be called like something like um how to give a good apology or something like that i can't remember what it's called but right just listen to all of season two (laughs) if you haven't already um (laughs) okay so on that note um thank you very much for joining us here today and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode bye guys